you told me you understand perimeter and you used to understand area. And I say that if you'd really understood these, you would know exactly when to add and when to multiply based on the picture. So let's get a little visual. First, just tell me what perimeter is. Okay, so the perimeter is like the distance, like feet and centimeter and et cetera. So it's like the stuff that goes around. And I'm gonna slip one word in there, the total distance around. And then what did you think area was? Area is like the surface, the cover of everything. Mm -hmm. And what did we cover it with? Do you remember? We always covered it with the same thing. The square inches. And yeah, square units. It could be square, square inches, units. square feet, etc. And you're right, to cover the surface. I love it. What a good way to put it. Let's look at the exact same shape two different ways. So you told me that perimeter was the total distance around. So let's imagine that we have a three by five shape and we're walking around it. Okay. So let's do um, three feet by five feet. Now we're, you told me that I'm going to walk around it. So let's do that. If I walk this length, how long have I walked? Three feet. Absolutely. Now we said this one was five feet. So then how about then if I go ahead and I turn the corner and I walk this too, how much have I walked now? Eight feet, right? I have walked eight feet. Channing, what'd you just do? So we just did addition. So we, we sure did. But we got to keep going, right? We're supposed to get all the way around the shape you told me. Okay, let's go. How far did I walk if I walked right there? The five's supposed to be over to the right and the three's supposed to be on the bottom, right? It's right. actually the sides across are the same. So okay. if this one's three, this one's also three. Okay. okay, so then how long would this one on the bottom be then? So the other one would be five. So we okay. add them together. Sure. If we keep walking, we're going to walk another three feet and then another five feet. Okay, so we just found the total distance around the shape. One way to find a total is just to add up all the sides. And so we get, what, 16 feet on this one? Okay, and this is the super duper important part to make it into your notes. You can always find perimeter by adding up all the sides. Now, sometimes there's other ways to go as well, but this always works. So perimeter is always adding? You always can find it that way. It's not the only way to do it with every shape, but it will always work. Some people were doing it other ways. They were multiplying by two because they saw the two sides were the same and they were doing some other things, but you can always find the perimeter by adding all the sides because you're just taking a walk around the outside. So then let's look at the other one. You told me area was the square units to cover. So again, we have a three foot by five foot shape, but this time we're not taking a walk around. This time we're covering it up with little one foot squares. So if this is three feet Channing, that means that I could break this into three strips and have now one, two, three going that way. And then we can do the same thing with the five. Oh, so that makes sense the square. Okay. And we can see it's five going that way. One, two, three, four, five. So of course you could always pattern the squares over it and then just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 little square feet. And we abbreviate square feet like this, okay? But we're so lazy, we want a math way to do it. We don't wanna draw squares every time. So think about this. I have three rows. Each of those three rows has five squares in it. One way to think about this is five squares happening three times. Three rows of five. There's a row of five, another row of five, and another row of five. Five squares happening three times or three times five. Does it have to be that order? Can you do like five and then the three? Absolutely, you sure can. Okay. Five columns of three means the same thing and would give us the same answer. Now this is interesting because not all shapes are this perfect. Like imagine if we had a triangle. If we had a triangle and I went to cover it in squares, well, things would get a little messy. So we might have to do some more work than this. However, however, you will always, no matter what kind of shape you have, see multiplication in an area formula because you're gonna be multiplying the two dimensions. Now you might be doing something more than that. Like with a triangle, you would have to half your answer that you got, but you will always see multiplication in an area formula. What do you mean like an area formula? Is that just a math term? 
confirmed. the math way of, of giving you directions. So we're going to see that next class. We're going to okay. start seeing, we haven't seen formulas yet, which is why we started with rectangles, because rectangles are really easy to see. You can really easily see why you add. You can really easily see why you multiply in a rectangle. Next class, we'll look at some that it's not so easy to see, so you would want the formula. Think of a formula like, like a map. It's like the math directions on how to do a problem. So if you're doing a rectangle for a rectangle, you just multiply the length times the width. Because I printed out this sheet. Yes, that's the formula sheet. Okay, and right. look look at the top section, Channing. Do you see how the top section says um, area on it? Oh, okay. Look where it says area of a rectangle. Okay, so yeah, A equals LW. Yeah, all they're saying there is to find the area multiply together the length and the width, which is what we already saw in our picture. We saw we could just multiply the three and the five. <laughs> so next class, we'll practice doing it with the formulas. This class, we were just practicing when it's perimeter, add up all the sides, when it's area, multiply the two dimensions. And then how would you apply this in daily life though? Like yeah, This one is used so frequently in daily life, especially if you're in any kind of construction. So, oh. you know, you're not in a construction field, so you're not seeing it as much, but I've been building an extension on my house. So, you know, we did perimeter when we did the frame of the walls, we had to get the two by fours all framing it out or framing the roof with all these pieces of wood. We did the perimeter when we were doing our windows because we had to put weather stripping around the outside of the window um, so that it didn't leak. It's like this gray rubber. We So we did perimeter when we went to build the frame to drop the bathtub into. You know, we needed a space to, we had to frame it out so the bathtub could drop. All those things were examples of perimeter. Does that make sense? Yeah. I was trying to think of, because in our deli, we have to um, do like how much chicken salad we have to make. And I was wondering. If That's like volume. And we okay. haven't gotten there okay. yet, but we will. When you do chicken salad, you're filling up a 3D container, right? Yeah, but I never, I never understood the concept. So maybe this later on, yeah. it will help me yeah. eat in the deli. Yeah. So anytime you're just drawing a line around, that's perimeter. So the only example I can think of in the deli is how much string to truss the chicken with. You know, the chicken is basically round yeah. and we take a string and we tie it around it. That would be an example of perimeter. I'm just drawing a line around the chicken. Now it's a more complex perimeter than I'm going to find on the GED. I don't have a formula for perimeter of a chicken. Okay, babe. But you know what I'm saying? I'm just drawing a line around the outside of something. Even imagine you had a really long line in the deli, you're short staffed, there's a line going out the door, and you have all these people standing in line, and there could be all these bends in the line. But the length of the line could be the perimeter around the store, you know, we could wrap those those guys around. So that's like perimeter. Now area is covering something up. So you know, at the you know, after you've sliced off the meat, and now you need to wrap it back up and cover it with plastic wrap. That plastic wrap is a great picture of area. I'm covering it up, covering mm -hmm. the surface. Or even if you put parchment paper down on sheet pans, do you have, do you use parchment ever on a sheet pan, like to make cookies or bread? Do you ever put papers down on the yeah. half pans? Yeah. So that's another example of area. And sometimes parchment paper even has little squares on it. Oh, yeah. I forgot about <laughs> have that. Have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anything in a line is like perimeter and anything in squares is like area. Make sense? Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Do you want to remember this on test day? Practice is what signals to the brain that information is important so that your brain builds a strong neural pathway to that information and yay, you can do it yourself come test day. So make sure you go practice.